Alright, so today we're going to be talking about linear equations. And by linear equations, I'm talking about those lines that you typically see uh, in the Cartesian coordinate plane. And if you aren't entirely familiar with that, that is perfectly okay. We will just be briefly discussing the concept today. So a linear equation, when you think of that, you probably think of some sort of line that, that looks like maybe this. And you have a Cartesian coordinate plane, right? And you have a plane that uh, resembles maybe like this this with your x-axis right here and your y-axis right over here and this here is your equation this is your line and you have some sort of equation some sort of function uh we'll call that uh, f of x right oops there's some sort of function f of x uh, let me write it in this way um, and these are all the possible solutions to f of x that make this equation right here uh, true in some sense and so taking that and considering, all right, so what, what, is, what does it mean? What do I mean by solutions? What do I mean by linear? What is that relationship between the different variables between your x and y in this case inside your function? And so when we consider linear equations, and going back to the initial function that we have, let's say your linear equation written in standard form looks something like y equals negative x plus, let's say, 5, right? And so this is standard form if you... Uh, probably recognize it and maybe from algebra or pre-calculus it might seem a little bit familiar and so actually if we rewrite it so we have your variables on the same side it's just written as x plus y equals five right and so taking that and, and looking at it a little bit further and interpreting it a little bit more we can actually come up with a generic form for linear equations another instance of a linear equation might just be x uh, 2x plus 3y or maybe plus 4 or 5 z equals zero right and so we have this generic form there's clearly some sort of pattern here in how we write it and uh what we'll be typically encountering in this case uh, in terms of computer science and looking at it from um matrix point of view is we have our variables right that's part one so we'll call it x1 plus uh, some other variable x2 plus going on x3 plus dot 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 and you have all these different variables until you get to xc for some variable and that is equal to some sort of constant right here we'll call that k and that constant and then of course your third and other component to a linear equation is some sort of coefficient we'll just call that a1 a2 a3 plus so on and so forth until you get to let's say a c right and this is your generic format for a linear equation right here and so taking that and keeping it in mind, let's consider a real world, real world situation where we can uh, really apply this format will be kind of useful to see and interpret, especially for someone who's coming from the outside. So if you've ever been on, say, a diet, right, a diet, you've probably uh, count calories before, you've probably taken a look at these different foods and considered, all right, so how much does it cost me in terms of the energy I'm taking in? So let's say you have a sandwich, a sandwich, and that is approximately, let's say, 250 calories, right? And you have a second food item that you're having for your lunch or maybe for a picnic or whatever you might be doing, um, the sandwich, and then you have, uh, let's say, a soda, a soft drink, pop, whatever you want to call it, please don't come for me on this, all right? And your soda is, let's say, 180 calories, and then lastly, let's say, you have a piece of gum hopefully not all at the same time maybe you have a gum a uh, piece of gum because you're a little bit hungry right before your lunch in other case let's say it's about five calories right and so this is your general lunch plan now there's a couple of ways to look at this now first of all you can of course have like two cups of soda you can have two pieces of gum you can have five sandwiches over the course of your day maybe not even during lunch maybe during breakfast maybe during dinner does someone have sandwiches for breakfast all right but i digress in either case you can represent the total calorie intake in a certain way so let's say your goal in terms of your diet is to reach a maximum of uh, 1,800 calories a day. That's a little bit low, so let's go a little bit higher. Let's say your goal is to reach 2,000 calories a day, right? That's your recommended uh, amount for an average U.S. adult. So then you can write that as our constant K. Keep in mind uh, the general format here was your A1, uh, your, your, your X1, your coefficient times your variable, plus all the way up to your total 
8 plus some coefficient once again times your variable for every single one is equal to some constant k. And so we're going to follow this format right here. I'm going to write it as a linear equation. So let's say you have uh, k as your maximum. So that's going to be 2,000 calories. And you want to meet that goal. So you want to be able to eat all these foods. It will call your sandwich, it will call it by the variable, uh, let's call it x1. You call your soda, your variable x2, and your gum, your variable x3. Right? And so clearly, because we're counting calories for each of these, we have these three variables that are a part of your linear equation. And then comes the question of your calorie count. So how are we going to count these calories? We're going to take it and we're going to multiply it by the number of each item that you get. So in this case, x1 is your sandwich. And because it's 250 calories, we're going to write that in as your coefficient. So 250 times x1. And because x2 has a calorie count of 180, we're going to write that in. Right, Write that in as 180 and lastly because your x3 item is approximately 5 calories for gum we're going to write that as your coefficient and this here is your linear equation and so let's consider one other thing let's say you have a system of linear equations so what do you mean by that a system and when we want to talk about system that's a series that's a set of linear equations and there's more than one and when we want to find a solution to your system of linear equations and solution by the way are all the possible values the x1 x2 x3 and so on and so forth that fit this given criteria this uh, equation right over here we want to find a solution to your system of linear equations what we will be looking at it are is essentially what fits not only your first equation but your second, your third equation, and depending on how many uh, there are. And if it doesn't fit any one of those equations, it is not considered a solution. All right, so let's add an additional caveat to your diet. Let's say throughout the course of the day, aside, aside from wanting to make sure you have only uh, 2,000 uh, calories and you hit exactly 2,000 calories uh, in, in your day, Let's say you also at the same time want to make sure you don't eat any more than uh, 10 items. So 10 items. In this case, let's say you want to eat, for simplicity, exactly 10 items, right? Exactly 10 items. Now, there may not be a solution to this equation. That is perfectly okay. However, if we want to consider how many items we're eating in total in a single day, we're going to have to add x1 plus x2 plus x3 because that represents the total number of items that you have, x3. And because you want a maximum of 10, we're going to take k and we're going to take that and make it into 10. Right, and so this here is your system of equations. This right here is your system of equations that represents the scenario we've just introduced in terms of your diet and if i won't solve it here this is essentially uh, what we're going to be considering when wanting to take for instance a computer algorithm whether in terms of classical computers or quantum computers we want to be able to solve it in that way and especially when there are multiple uh, linear equations multiple uh, systems uh, to keep in mind to consider this is where the idea of using an algorithm of some sort becomes extremely useful because doing it by hand may take an extremely large amount of time all right so that's it that's the introduction and really brief overview and review of linear systems and equations